practice. I've had a lot of students coming to me with back pain lately, and I myself have had back pain at times. And I know that what happens for our backs a lot of times is that there can be stiffness, there can be tightness, or there can be congestion around the sacrum. So this practice will teach you some of the key components to um, how to support yourself while to open up your back. Um, one of the things to know about your back is that we want to create and maintain the natural curve in your back. That's when your back feels healthiest and happiest, is when it has a natural curve. Interestingly, it's what is happening in the legs that can really support a lot of freedom for your back. So the legs govern the spine. So as we go through this practice, you'll notice I pretty much will talk about your legs and what your legs are doing, and that's what supports your spine. I won't be talking as much specifically about your back. So the key point here is to try to find a dynamic balance for your body. Dynamic balance means balance that is not static, it's not rigid, it's not held tightly and tried to lock into place, but it's something that is shifting, dynamically changing. It is a way that you co-participate with how your body is right now. Not yesterday and not tomorrow, but right now. And trying to find the balance with it right now. So every body is different, and you apply the yoga like a prescription medicine in a way that is exactly right to bring balance to your body. If you have balance in your body, it feels so much better. Same with your life, right? I could tell you anything to do in your life. You could do it, and it might not work at all for you because we want to find dynamic balance for your own life too. So how can you show up and support yourself, support your body, and support your life so that you're not breaking your back all the time and you feel great and you have dynamic balance? Please come to your mat, grab a block and a strap to start standing. Please grab your strap and your block. Have your block close by, right beside here, and take your strap, open it up, and make a belt. A, literally a belt around your belly. So you, to do that, if you have one of these double ring straps, you take the tail through both, and then back through one to pull it. And I find it's easier to tell people just to make a, a nice loose belt, and then we'll move it. So a nice loose belt around your, uh, around your waist or belly. And then just twist it. Now, before you move the strap down, come and take your block. Place your block between your calves. So the flat, short end is facing towards the front. And it's between your shins. Then walk your feet in pretty close to the block. Now take the strap that's been around your belly and move it down to your thighs. So the straps around your thighs and pull it pretty tight. Now I'm going about mid thigh to start. And pull it pretty tight so you can feel it. The tail can just hang off to the side. You don't need to worry about it. And bring your hands onto your thigh, uh, hips. Excuse me. Squeeze your shins into the block. Press your thighs out to the side. So the alignment key for helping your low back have more freedom, this part, is shins in, thighs wide. Hold, shins in, hugging into the little block in, the, in between your calves, thighs wide at the top. Let's see if you can hold for about 20, 30 seconds. We're almost there. As you do, press the tops of your thighs back a little bit and scoop your tail down, lift up in your low belly. So there's always these things happening to create balance in your pelvis. And then exhale and relax. Notice the difference in your body. And then take the strap and move it up just a little bit higher to the upper part, mid upper calf.
Again, hands to your hips and squeeze. Shins go in, thighs go wide. So shins hug into the block, take the tops of your thigh bones wide. Now as your thigh bones widen, they can help to widen your pelvis. And a lot of times there's pain in the back, in the lower back particularly, because the pelvis has gotten narrowed and gotten congested. And your sacrum fits into your pelvic bones, into your hip socket, right? Sorry, into your pelvic bones. Your sacrum comes down at the base of your spine and fits in there. And it can be kind of feeling like it's jammed up. So when you open the tops of the thighs, it helps to drag the hip bones a little wider, the, uh, the ilia out wider, and then you've got a little more room around your sacrum. It may be causing you to arch your low back a little more than is needed though. So lengthen your tailbone down and lift up in your low belly. So shins in, thighs wide, tail down, belly lifts, lots of things happening, all of it to create some balance in your legs and balance through your pelvis so your back feels better. Relax again. Take the strap off. And set your block off to the side as well. Now you'll need to come to a wall and bring a block with you to the wall. These guys are done. Come to the wall. The block goes about a foot, eight inches to a foot away from the wall, depending on how tall you are. And then stand on the block with your outside leg. So the outside leg stands on the block, you've got a, the other leg hanging to the inside. You can place your hand on the wall for support and the other hand on your hip. Start by just letting the inside leg dangle and swing. I'm not tilting and tipping my pelvis, I'm literally just swinging the leg out of the pelvis and letting gravity lengthen my leg, lengthen my psoas muscle, which is running right through I learned this little sequence from Randy Boyd, who is uh, a yoga therapist and a Shia yoga teacher based in West Virginia. Now, come to stillness, flex the foot that's been hanging down, and press your pinky toe into the wall. This is shins trying to go, it's actually helping your thigh press out, the whole leg now pressing out. You've got to balance with this side, so the glute fires up, this leg stays steady, so that you don't wobble off to the side or shift your hips. Everything stays still, you just push into the wall. You can try taking your hand away from the wall and balancing here. This is strongly activating my outer leg, and my outer hip, and my glutes. Continue to drop your tail and lift your low belly. Good, release that, step down, feel. May move around and then turn around and do the other side. Again, stand up on the block with your outside leg. Inside hand can touch the wall. And then let your foot dangle and swing without swinging your pelvis to do it. So the leg that's standing on the block stays very solid. The other leg is pretty soft, pretty relaxed, hanging down, swinging. Then make that other leg strong. So the hanging leg is now strong and stable. Engage the muscles around the bones and push your pinky toe into the wall very strongly. Don't let it push your hip out of alignment. So you keep it right over top of the standing leg and the glute of the standing leg, the outer hip on the standing leg get really, really strong. Glute and outer hip on the leg that's into the wall are also strong. And again, you may take your hands off the wall and the tail scoops down, low belly lifts. Now release your foot back down from the block and step down. If you only have a little bit of time in your day, those two exercises, the block with the strap and pressing shins and thighs wide, and then standing on the block and working with the wall, those will greatly help your back feel a lot better. If you have a little bit more time, continue with me into a couple of, of poses. So you can come to the top of your mat. Inhale and stretch both arms to the sky. Exhale and bow forward, Uttanasana. You may need to bend your knees and send your thighs back here in Uttanasana or work with straight legs. 
Inhale, reach your heart forward. Exhale, step your left leg back. Come into a lunge on your fingertips. Now in the lunge, we work with engaging the legs in the shins and thighs wide to create space for your lower back. Bring your back knee down onto the mat. You can always fold your mat over for support. And take your left hand a little bit wide. Take your right hand to your right thigh. Shins go in. Take the tops of the thighs wide. Scoop your tail, lift your belly, and twist towards the right. This is a twist that aligns and opens your psoas muscle, which can be quite a culprit in back pain. You can stay there or lift your back thigh. I find that working with my knee down helps me get more twist and more openness in the psoas, so I usually do knee down. Inhale, untwist. And keeping your legs as they are, walk your hands over, off the mat to the left. Squeeze your shins towards each other. Take your thighs wide. And then scoop your tail, lift your low belly, and either stay here. Bring your hands, uh, excuse me, elbows onto a block. So coming a little bit lower. Or bring your elbows down to the floor. Watch out that your knee doesn't come with you. Let your front knee stay straight up and down. And continue pressing the tops of the thighs wide. When you do that, you make so much space in your sacrum, and you can hook your tail down. Lengthen and lift your low belly and soften your upper back. Walk your hands back. Lift your back knee. Step forward into standing forward bend to switch sides. Inhale and extend your heart to the front. Exhale, step the other leg back, the left leg back. Bring your back knee down onto the mat and curl your toes under. And then take your right hand a little bit off to the right. I'm sorry, I said left, I meant right. Bring your left hand to your left thigh. Take a breath. Make more internal space for healing, for feeling good. And then scissor your legs towards the middle. With the legs scissoring, take the tops of your thighs wide and back, and then scoop your tail, lift your low belly, and slowly turn, turn, turn. Now, if you reach a point of pain as you're turning, if there's some pain in your low back, you just pause right before that point of pain. You don't have to push into this. Only go as deep as you're staying out of pain. You may find an area where it feels like, oh, this is a great stretch. You can lean into that without overdoing it. Key here is what your legs are doing. So scissor your shins in, take the tops of the thigh bones wide, lift your belly and turn. And inhale, come back around. Walk both hands over to the left side of the mat. And again, scissor your shins, hug your shins to the middle, shins in. Take your thighs wide. Lift your low belly as you scoop your tail and possibly bring your forearms down to the floor or to the blocks. Again, watching out that your left knee doesn't go wild off to the left or hug in towards you. Keep your left knee straight up and down. Tops of the thighs stay wide. Hook your low belly under. And soften your upper. Slowly walk your hands back around. Lift your back knee, and this time step back into a therapeutic version of a downward facing dog. So instead of going in deep into your regular down dog, take your feet out about as wide as your mat. Arms are strong, arms are still doing regular dog. Bend both knees deep. Keep your shins hugging in without your knees knocking together. So shins hug in, take your knees out as wide as the mat, and Really press your thighs wide, tops of the thighs wide. When you do that, you'll get a little more curve in your low back. If you tend to have too much curve, scoop, hook your tail down, and now reach through both arms strongly. This is a great way to work. You don't need to straighten your knees. If you're having a lot of lower back pain, straightening your knees and downward facing dog could just exacerbate that. Keep the knees bent, keep pressing the tops of the thighs wide. 
Now walk your feet a little closer together and step your left leg forward into lunge again. And bring your back knee down. Should have said before, go ahead, grab your blocks and place them beside your mat. Come to the blocks on the highest height and slowly stretch your front leg straight. When you stretch your front leg straight, move your back knee so that it's pretty much under the back th uh, top of the back thigh. It might be the back thigh might be a little bit back, but you don't want to be in like a lunge in a hanuman. And you also don't want your hips way way back. Line them up so that you can really work in the pelvis. A lot of times when the low back is tight, not feeling good, the hamstrings are also tight. So opening the hamstrings can create more freedom for your back. How do we do it? Shins in, thighs wide again. So hug both shins in towards the middle of the mat. And do your best to take the tops of both thighs wide. So being up on the blocks, even if you, know, you can touch the floor easily as I can, being up on the blocks gives you a lot more range to take the tops of the thighs wide. When you take the tops of the thighs wide, you'll find that your back hip can come around and forward more. Keep that and keep lifting your low belly. Extend your legs longer, and then you may stay here upright on your blocks or walk yourself forward and bow over the leg for a breath or two. Key alignment is that the shins keep hugging in and the thighs keep widening out without settling back. Yeah. 
facing dog to do it. Left foot forward, bring your right knee down onto the mat. Take your left hand to your left thigh, spin your torso towards the left, and then lift your back foot and reach back with your hand to take your foot. Now click your foot over towards your uh, pinky toe side. Put your hand on the pinky toe side and click your foot into the pinky toe, into the hand. So it's not sickle in. Breath, make more internal space, open to a bigger energy. And then hug your shins to the middle and widen the tops of the thighs. That relieves pressure on your sacrum. Scoop your tail, lift up in your low belly, and come into the pose a little deeper if it's available by pushing into your feet and lengthening your torso. and release this leg. Release your hands down, stretch back again, down facing dog. And then bend both knees to come down to child's pose. Bring your big toes to touch, your knees apart. Walk yourself back. And rest, lengthen your spine out to rest in child's pose. Even in child's pose, do a subtle hug of your shins in. Widening out the tops of your thighs. Very softly now, walk your hands back to your body. Come up to a seated position. And just place a hand on your heart and close your eyes for a moment. Namaste.